Hello Stampers, this is Dina from pocketfullofstamps.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. What I'm going to share with you is how I made this pretty card. Um, there's a really fun technique I'm going to show you for doing the background. And then I'm also going to give you a little sneak peek of a new embossing folder that's going to be in the holiday catalog coming up here really soon. So let me show you how I made the card. The first thing I needed to do was to make the background. I'm going to do mine with Brusho Color Crystals and I'll show you how that works. But um, when I was looking at my card later, I realized that you could actually make your background um, a couple different ways. You could sponge brayer it or you could just sponge a background. Um, anything to get a lot of color on the, on the background is what you're looking for. Um, I'm, I've got a piece of watercolor paper here and the first thing I'm going to do is to squirt it with a little bit of water and then I'm going to take some colors I'm going to use some of the orange and a little bit of red And a little bit of yellow to finish it off and if you haven't seen our color crystals before these are the brusho um, if you haven't seen these before you can see that that the paint crystals in here are activating with the water and what I want to do is add a little bit more water just where I can see where they're not activated and my paper is pretty wet now I'll just kind of move that around a little bit. The ideal thing to do with this now is to let it sit and dry naturally, but um, I don't have the patience for that. I'm going to squirt one more little bit right there where that red is. There it goes. Um, I don't have the patience for that, so I have my heat tool here. And I'm just kind of moving the color around here so I get it all over the paper. And once I have it the way I want it to look, I am going to take the heat tool and uh, dry this. This is going to get a little bit loud, so hang in there with me for a minute. This will also move the paint around a little bit. Once it starts to dry, it'll curl up a little bit. You see it curling there. What I like to do is flip it over and heat it a little bit from the back. It'll take a little bit of the curl out. All right, so when it's dry, I will move on to the next step. One of the items that is available in our catalog this year are these delightfully detailed laser cut specialty papers. You get um, four sheets uh, each of these two beautiful designs. I don't know how well, let me move this one out of the way here for a second so maybe you can see this one. Um, this one is just all floral. This is so delicate and so beautiful. It's white on one side, vanilla on the other side. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then we have this piece. And what you do with this one is there's a couple of border pieces here. And then there's six definite um, styles that you can cut out. Um, again, vanilla on one side, white on the other. And what I did for this next part is I cut this piece out right here, this floral piece. Here I have my floral piece cut out and I have my watercolor paper that I've done the washi on. What I'm gonna do 
is take this and layer it on top of my background and I want to sponge it. You could secure this down. I'm just going to hold it in place. Um, I have a sponge here and I'm using Early Espresso ink and you just want to sponge right over that background paper. Some of these pieces are mm, very delicate, so be a little careful when you're going over those parts. You can go over this a lot or a little. The more you go over it, the more you'll cover up the color behind. I'm trying very carefully to keep this in place. There we go. Leaves popped up a little bit, but it's back down now. Okay, so it looks like I have pretty much the coverage that I want. So now I can remove that mask and look at how pretty that is. Now again, you could, I could keep going over it and this would get darker and darker, but it's really neat to me the way that a little bit of the color shows through behind that brown as well. Once it was done, I cut my paper down just a little bit. I cut it four inches by three inches. You could uh, leave it full size if you wanted to, cut it down a little bit less, but this is the size I wanted for my card. I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer to it, so I've got a wink of Stella pen here and I'm just gonna Flick some color on here. You may not be able to see this in the camera, but it does add, Wink of Stella will add a little bit of shimmer and shine to your project. And I'm hitting it pretty hard on my finger to flick that uh, ink off the tip. Okay, I'll hold it up here and see if you can see a little bit of shimmer. Probably not, but maybe, we'll see. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do is to emboss this piece of early espresso cardstock. And to do that, I'm going to use a brand new embossing folder that we just, it's gonna be in the new holiday catalog. It is um, corrugated, it looks like corrugated cardboard, corrugated paper. I really, if those of you who've been stamping for a while, remember we had that little tool that you would crank and it would corrugate it. I miss that tool because I love corrugated paper. So. I was really happy to see this back. Um, what I want to do is build my little sandwich here for my embossing or for the big shot. Um, when you're embossing with these really thick folders like this one, you do not need your extra shim and you only need one or one uh, of the um, plates. So what I'm going to do is take my cardstock. This one also has the line down here, so if you're trying to get it lined up perfectly straight, you just line up the edge of your paper with that line and squeeze it in. It's going to be straight, perfect every time. Love that. That goes in between your um, platform and your plastic plate here. And then I need my big shot. And I'll just push that through. Wait till you see how fabulous this embossing folder is. Woohoo! Look at that. Is that amazing or what? I love it. And you can use either side. Really, really awesome embossing folder. I know that's one you'll want to add to your collection. 
Now I have all my pieces, I'm ready to put my card together. I'm gonna start by stamping this little piece. This is so saffron, and I cut it with one of the stitched shapes, one of the ovals from the stitched stitched shapes framelits. Try to say that three times fast. Um, I'm again using the early espresso ink and this stamp is um, a thank you from the love what you do set. You could use any thank you for this or any any stamp really. Stamp that in the early espresso ink. Then I'm going to layer. I'm going to start with oops start with my so saffron that's going to go in the background here. I'm going to layer this on top of my brown. And then I'm going to take my watercolor paper. And layer that one at an angle the opposite direction. Then on the back side, I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive and take some of this vanilla, very vanilla baker's twine, and I'm going to attach it here on one side, wrap it around a couple of times, and secure it on the back. Add a little bit of adhesive here to the back to make sure it's good and stuck down there. And then, whoops, add some adhesive around the edge. And this is going to stick down to my card front. This is Poppy Parade, really pretty color. What I did for my colors too is kind of look at the colors that were in here. This is very close to Poppy Parade and then there was some light yellow in there too that I chose to sew saffron from. Little piece sticking out there. All right. Then I'm going to stick my thank you on with a couple of dimensionals. And what I'm going to do, because I don't want it to be stuck to the ribbon, is I'm going to put it here on either side so that the ribbon will be down the center here. Like that. And then the final thing I'm going to do is take my baker's twine again and just tie a little bow over here on the side. Sometimes this baker's twine works just the way I want it to and Sometimes I need to play with it a little bit. There we go. Clip this off and I think I need new scissors as well. So there you go. There is a little finished card. Just like that. Thanks again for joining me for this card quickie video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my blog at pocketfullofstamps.com. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. Until next time, happy stamping.